morning, everyone. Welcome to the Teachers Retirement System of the City of New York Investment Meeting for October 4th, 2018. Uh, Patricia, would you please call the roll? John Adler. I am here. Thomas Brown. Here. David Kazanski. Present. Lindsay Oates. Deborah Penny. Here. Susanna Vickers. Here. We do have a quorum. Great. Thank you. <coughs> okay, with that, we will proceed with our public agenda and turn it over to Robin to uh, walk us through the performance reviews. Thank you. Um, the first item on the public agenda is the August performance of the passport funds, <coughs> and I believe that everyone should have a copy of the August report, which is, this is the same report that was emailed in advance. So for August, uh, continued to be a uh, strong month for U.S. equities. You can see that the Russell 3000 index was up 3.5% for the month. So year to date, the Russell index is up 10.4%. The diversified equity fund, which is diversified into international as well as defensive strategies, um, underperformed the Russell and uh, very slightly underperformed the hybrid benchmark due primarily to the allocations to international and defensive strategies, which um, underperformed the, the very strongly performing U.S. equity market. The um, balance fund rose Isn't about 60 basis points for the month, so year to date that's up about 1%. The International Equity Fund, as we mentioned, it was a negative uh, period for international equities. And so um, in contrast to the year-to-date performance of 10%, over 10% for the U.S. equity market, the International Composite Benchmark, which is a, a combination of developed markets and, and emerging markets, year-to-date period is actually negative. So that's both local market performance as well as the impact of the very strong dollar um, hurting, uh, negatively impacting U.S. dollar-based investors and in non-U.S. equities. The Inflation Protection Fund was up uh, 33 basis points for the month uh, and, and is a, a little over 1% for the year-to-date period. And the Socially Responsive Fund is uh, lagged its S&P 500 index benchmark was up about 2.7% for the month and year to date is up close to 9.9%, very close to the S&P 500 return. So I, there's a lot more detail in the subsequent pages about individual manager performance. I would say that the active managers are lagging in general, uh, particularly in um, U.S. equity composite, so s small lags for the month and quarter, but for the year to date, we're behind by about 200 basis points. Still a very strong return for the year to date, and absolute numbers 8.3% for the first eight months of the year. Pretty big number. Um, but nonetheless, um, the portfolio uh, portfolio's value strategies have underperformed the broad equity market. It's been a very, it's been an equity market dominated by growth stocks. So the largest growth stocks have done particularly well. You know, you've heard about the FANG stocks. FANG stocks. Um, and so I think we have, we have a diversification across value and growth um, companies, but we, we don't have momentum growth strongly represented in this portfolio, and that's what's really worked this year. So that, that is a, at least a partial explanation of the lag of active managers. So happy to talk about anything specific with well, regard to the August. Just looking at one manager, yeah. Wasatch. Yeah. I mean, those numbers are like off the charts. They are off the charts. I mean, the one month number of, of 11.4. Yeah. And then, you know, a year to date of 30%. I mean, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> right. So, uh, I hope they're watching. What? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I will get back to the committee on that, I, uh, to the board on that. I don't know the specific holdings okay. they have. The interesting thing is that if you look at those um, very notable <laughs> figures, 
But then you look at the longer term performance. Longer term performance over three years has been very good, so they're outperforming, but it's by not, 200 basis right, points. And if you charts. go out to five years, they're lagging by right. close to 100 basis right. points. So I think, uh, and we'll get the specific securities, but I think this is just a case of um, they had underperformed for a period of time, and now right. the, their names are um, finally coming back. Any other questions for Robin on the uh, on the uh, August report? Okay, we'll move on to September. Yes, so we have preliminary reports for September, and uh, a, a more modest month <laughs> in September, but still positive. Seventeen basis points for the Russell three thousand. Um, the uh, Developed markets did relatively well during the month of September. So the composite benchmark, which again is a mixture of developed and emerging markets, is, was positive by 70 basis points. So for the calendar year to date, for the international composite benchmark, slightly less negative. Uh, the defensive strategies were, we, uh, the benchmark was flat. And um, for variable A or the diversified equity fund, we think that the, the benchmark will be up a, a, a little over 25 basis points. So for the calendar year, for the diversified equity fund year to date through September, we see a return of 7.8%. Um, for the one year number, 14%. And for the three year number, an average annual return for that benchmark of over 15%. So um, very robust numbers for the balanced fund benchmark because um, bonds, this is primarily 70% bonds, yields rose, so bonds were um, affected. So slight loss, 21, uh, seven basis points for the balanced fund benchmark. Um, we mentioned that, I mentioned that the developed markets had a positive uh, return, po developed non-US equity markets had a positive return of almost 1% for the month. When you combine that with emerging markets, which actually, um, from a US dollar-based investor perspective, lost money, we think that the international composite benchmark was up about 70 basis points. The Inflation Protection Fund, a mutual fund we know, was up 11 basis points for the month. And the socially responsive equity fund actually had a small loss of 80 basis points during the month. So much more muted returns for September. Questions for Robin about the month of September. I just have a question, which is that I read a little snippet on my way in this morning that the 10 year T bill yesterday is up to its highest rate in I don't know how long. But Many long years, long yeah. Years. Yeah. So could you just give a, you know, Yeah, I, I think that? that was, you know, that was a response to, um, to, expectations of continued growth and, more importantly, continued Fed tightening, right? So indications from the Fed have been that they're, that they're um, they think that it will be reasonable to continue tightening. The market thinks they'll continue tightening. And, um, you know, with the, I think the unemployment rate is the lowest it's been since for many years as well. And so there's expectations of rising inflation. So I think expectations of the Fed tightening and continued growth and inflation concerns have led led to the uh, tenure jumping in yield. So just from the, I mean, obviously it's a very short-term indicator, but just from the very narrow perspective of, of the fund's uh, expected returns, this is good news, right? I mean, in other words, the Through the passport rate, funds or the pension fund, which you are talking about? In total. I guess I was thinking about the, either one, but yeah. uh, you can distinguish if you I mean, it just seems like rising. We've been in this low interest rate environment for a very long time, and now it's apparent. It apparently, we're starting to revert to the mean, uh, perhaps. So, and and I would think that would be a good thing for. I, I guess I'm really thinking about it from the pension fund perspective more than anything. Well, from certainly you want yields to rise if you're a bond investor, right? right. There's short term pain, long term gain. You want to be realizing higher. Yet, and so the only way to do that is to live through a period of rising interest rates. For the equity market, 
the news might not be mm -hmm. as benign. And one of the reasons I emphasize this 15% average annual return for the past three years and 12% and, and for the past five years for the diversified equity fund hybrid benchmark. And if you go up, really, let's look at the Russell 3000. Um, for the past five years, we've had average annual returns over 13%. So yeah, if seven years. So um, you know, to put it in the simplest possible terms, this feels like we're borrowing from future returns, mm -hmm. and the, these are certainly above expectation, above well above long term averages, and so um, it, it reflects lots of things, including lots of liquidity sloshing around in the market, very little competition from interest-bearing instruments. So to the extent, there are so many factors and so many variables that feed into this, but to the extent that yields rise, that's not, that's not necessarily a good harbinger for the equity market and the um, unexpectedly uh, and amazing returns we've gotten over the last three, five, seven years in the US equity market. Also, um, I think raise some concerns about what we might expect from that market over the next intermediate term. On the other hand, I've been saying this for years. <laughs> At some point, like a stop clock, I will be right. But um, but I do think rising yields good good eventually for long for bond, long term bondholders. Not so good for in the intermediate term for equity investors. Robin, so my understanding. And, and I very well may be wrong. Was that like in the in the week or so weeks or so before uh, we've seen this kind of uh, yield go mm -hmm. up? There was a lot of talk about whether or not it was going to flatten out or even invert, and that that was going to be a symbol or a sign that a recession might be coming. Yeah. But now you're saying that yields going up also may be a harbinger of problems in the equity market. So I'm, um, Well, not necessarily because of, of recession or necessarily economic growth, but um, it, it makes, makes borrowing for corporate entities more expensive. <laughs> and it also um, indicate, it, it, it also um, provides incentives for investors to move out of equity markets into fixed income instruments. So, um, in general, rising yield, there, there's so many factors that drive equity market returns, but rising yields are not necessarily, not typically a positive force in equity valuations. Okay? Because, because stocks should be um, <laughs> discounted cash flows from those companies, and if you're discounting them at higher rates, the current value, the present value of, the, of that entity is lower that corporation is lower. So all else equal, rising rates aren't good for the market. OK, other questions for Robin? Great. Um, so let's move to the next item, which is the discussion of the investment groups. Great. So thank you. So we have circulated, and um, there's been a couple of editions of this. Um, so we've handed out the most recent version that you received by email of both the clean copy and the red line copy of and the statement of of investment beliefs um, really reflects actually you know what I want to make sure that you got the most recent one I think they did. You did? It looks consistent. Okay, it good. Looks right. good. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> thank you. That's always good. Um, so there aren't significant changes. Uh, there's some changes in the in wording, most particularly around um, it, the last and next to last sub bullet points. But I don't think that the substance of anything has changed from the last time the, the board has reviewed this statement. So um, any uh, discussion of, of this draft? No, 
I mean, I'll, I'll just say that I think that the um, the edits were helpful in strengthening some of the um, the thoughts expressed in the statement. And um, you know, from my perspective, it looks good. And it's one page. <laughs> <laughs> if you manage the font carefully. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so if there's no further discussion, I think um, what I, I think what we do is we say we have consensus, consensus. Uh, over this statement, and then we would formally adopt it at the next board meeting, right? So, do we have consensus over uh, the draft statement of investment? Yes, we do. Great. Okay. And and just for for the benefit of the board members who aren't aware of this, this is going to be inserted into the IPS as the very first section. And it will also be used as we work through the process of thinking about the emerging market, replacing the uh, country screening process for the emerging market investments in both the pension fund and the passport funds. Because this this document will be used for as the basis for a more detailed discussion about how we evaluate portfolio company holdings in those emerging market portfolios. Okay, great. And uh, next, we have the discussion of the IPS review. The next steps. So we. This was put on the agenda simply to reinvigorate the process. There was a lot of time spent uh, earlier this year and last year on trying to streamline the IPS, um, update it, and make it a more user-friendly document. And uh, it is not yet complete. But uh, there, there has continued to be work on it. And Suzanne, I don't know if you wanted to make some comments. Yeah, just to, I mean, and it took me um, a little bit of time to kind of get refocused on, on where we are. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Um, what we have is a full draft of the entire um, IPS uh, at this point um, with, you know, all sections sort of the what we call the Robin sections and the BAM sections. All, all of those have been combined into one document that has made a couple of turns in the spring and over the summer. Um, right now, BAM, uh, our interim CIO, had been handed off comments from our previous CIO, and those comments are being checked with asset class heads. So I expect that the final BAM comments would be um, done in the coming weeks, and we've um, underscored for them the importance of, of doing that quickly. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I'm going to show Robin what we have so far um, from an investment perspective. And then we were hoping to um, do a conference call to go over the draft with our little subcommittee uh, in the coming weeks, and then be able to present to the full board before the end of the year. You're going to distribute it to the subcommittee before the conference call for that? Yes. I think the conference call will be in, I'll schedule something for November so we can be sure we'll have, early November, so we can be sure we have the, the a version from uh, the mayor's office, and BAM, in advance. Yeah, I'm sorry. BAM. And then we can give BAM staff a uh, end of October deadline to get all the we might need a week to review it. Right, we exactly. Just, yeah, I mean, yes. it's, you know, it's been a while. And right. it's, yes. And it's streamlined, but it's yes. not short still. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's and why it's dense. end yeah. of October for a yeah. November call. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I think it's in very good shape. Good. Yay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I would actually say we need more than a week to review it. No, yeah, I, I, would, I was thinking I, that too. Yeah. But. Okay. I so mean, we, so yeah. mid November. We'll get the, the version back by the end of October. Okay. And I'll circulate some dates and see if those work for the group. Sounds good. Okay. So I think that concludes our public agenda uh, for today.
Uh, we have some executive agenda items as well. So uh, a motion would be in order to uh, exit the public uh, session and enter executive. I move pursuant to Public Officers Law Section 105 to go into executive session for discussions on specific investment matters. Thank you, Deborah. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Susanna. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. We'll go into executive session. All right, we're back in public session. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, <laughs> Susan, would you please report out of executive session? Certainly. In executive session, we received one manager update, and we also received a presentation and had a spirited discussion <laughs> about trends in the defined contribution marketplace. Thank you. Uh, so I believe that concludes our business for today. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Ms. Penny. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.